What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of my cooking show. My name is Ben for those of you that do not know. On today's episode with the Green Bay Packers taking on the Minnesota Vikings this week for week number two in the NFL season, I decided, well initially I was gonna make onion rings to be honest with you, but a couple problems with that. One, I don't like onions and two, it seems like whenever you mention rings around a Minnesota fan they get pretty uncomfortable or pretty upset I didn't want to trigger anyone, so I didn't want to make onion rings. Uh, <laughs> so instead, I decided to make Juicy Lucy's. If you don't know what a Juicy Lucy is, it is basically a burger with cheese on the inside. And I decided to make this for this week because in Minnesota, there are two locations that claim to have founded the Juicy Lucy. One is Matt's Bar, and the other is the Five Eights Club. I could be wrong there, but it, it's something similar to that. Basically, they, they banter back and forth on who was the original founder of the Juicy Lucy. So I'm really excited to jump in and make these for today's episode. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to need uh, is obviously a protein of some sort or something to make the patty. I don't know if you could make a veggie Juicy Lucy or maybe with Beyond Meat. I don't know. Um, but I use ground chuck, 85% lean, 15% fat. Uh, I get my meat here in Green Bay from Austin's Meat Market. If Maybe it's Austin's grocery store, I don't know, I call it Austin's Meat Market. If you're coming to a game, tailgating and looking for a place to get some meat, I highly recommend it. They're not paying me at all to say that or anything like that. I just really think their product is great. They're known for their brats, they're known for their meat. They, they place in Best of the Bay or win Best of the Bay pretty much every year. So I highly recommend Austin's Meat Market. Once again, they're not paying me at all. Uh, so I got a pound of 85% lean, 15% fat. And the fat, you're, you're gonna want 15 to 20% fat in, in your protein. And that's really gonna add a lot of flavor to the burger and make it so it doesn't get dried out you know, too bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 16 ounces and I'm gonna split it into four pieces, four ounces a piece obviously, simple math. And then I'm gonna thin them out and try to give myself as much space as possible to put the cheese in there before combining two of the patties together. I don't wanna have uh, it looking like a meatball, so I wanna try to get it as thin as possible and give myself as much space to work with. I'm gonna start by uh, dividing these up into four pieces and we'll do that now. So we have our cheese here that I'm gonna be stuffing inside the burgers. I'm using extra sharp cheddar. I bought a block of it so I could kind of cube it up a little bit. I did uh, thin square slices, uh, but I still want to give them some thickness. That way there's a ooziness to the burger itself. And now what I'm gonna do is take this cheese, put it in the inside of the patties and kind of combine the patties together and form essentially two patties at this point. So we're gonna do that now. When shaping your burger, you want to make sure you're taking the opportunity to seal the edges tightly. If you don't seal it enough or take enough time to seal the edges, what's going to happen is the cheese is going to ooze out while you're cooking it. At that point, you're not going to have a juicy loose any longer. You're going to just have a boring hamburger with all the cheese cooked out of it. So make sure you really take the time, go over it a few different times and seal those edges together. That way it's not separating while you're going through the cooking process. And as you can see, now that we've sealed it all together, it looks like a normal burger ready to go into the cast iron skillet. Okay, so we got the burgers stuffed with the cheddar. You might be asking yourself, Ben, what's this extra cheddar for? And the answer is, that is to eat while you're cooking your burgers. Kind of explain, earlier I said to cut these into four ounce pieces or that's what I'm doing, so I have equal parts. And the reason, not that I probably need to say it, but it's just to make sure it's even cooking. I don't want one side of the burger that's gonna have eight ounces and the other have four and then it just makes it hard to blend. So try to do even portions the best you can. Now, not all of you might have a scale like I do, but just 
just do your best with it. Um, that's gonna make for an even cooking process on both sides. And you're probably yelling at the screen right now, Ben, you forgot to season the meat. What are you doing? I know you're white, but season your damn meat. That is to come. The reason I don't season my meat before forming the patties is I don't want salt in the inside of the burger. What it'll do is actually draw moisture out and makes it where it's, it's a drier burger. So I always like to season heavily uh, before I actually put the meat on the uh, grill or however you're cooking it. Today we're actually gonna be using cast iron skillet. If you don't have one of these, you can use your grill obviously, but I'm gonna use cast iron today just, uh, just because. It seems like a good idea. If you're using a cast iron skillet like I am, you're gonna want a fat of some sort to put in the bottom to help avoid sticking. Do not use butter. Uh, we're gonna have this very high heat. Butter is going to burn, which is gonna leave a gross, bitter taste on your meat. I actually made some bacon earlier for my burgers, so I am using the fat from the bacon as my fat for cooking the burgers. So I'm gonna heat up my cast iron skillet here, let it get nice and hot, and then I'm gonna add the fat, let that melt down a little bit and get hot, and then we'll add the, the meat. But first, before we add it, season, season, season. I'm gonna use some salt and pepper. All right, so our burger season, this is plenty hot. It's actually starting to smoke a little bit. That's the problem with trying to do a cooking show by yourself and recording the camera angles and everything. But starting to smoke a little bit, so we're gonna put this on. I'm gonna actually turn down the heat a little bit there too. It's gonna, it's gonna yell at us and that's good. That's what you want. Uh, that means you're sealing in the juices on there. If you're putting it into cold oil, Odds are it's not gonna good. It's be good, it's gonna absorb the oil rather than actually use it to cook. So now we're gonna wait, we're gonna watch the meat as it starts to change color underneath. You'll see the color coming around. That's your indication to flip. Now depending on how you like your burger, depends on how you want, long you wanna let this cook. Um, so I'm gonna just kinda keep an eye on it. It's looking like a good time. So I'm gonna actually flip this burger here, uh, see what the uh, coloring looks like on the other side, which is always the best part. And that looks great, looks perfect. Uh, as you can see for yourself, looks awesome. We're gonna let it cook the rest of the way. When you're cooking this, make sure you're not pushing down on the, on the burger with the spatula. Let the pan do its job. If you push it down, you're gonna push all those juices out there. You're probably gonna push the cheese out of it as well. Just let it sit, let it cook. Don't, don't mess with it until you're gonna flip it or remove it from the pan. All right, so the burger is done. I'm going to bring it out of the pan and let it rest for a little while. Let those juices kind of form together and let that cheese kind of form together a little bit so it's not molten lava when you're pulling it out. That is the danger when you're eating this is that it can get very hot, the cheese on the inside and when you bite in. Uh, so you wanna give it a little bit to cool, that way you're not, uh, like I said, biting into a molten lava burger. Let it, let's let it cool. So I've let the burger sit. Now with the roll, I just cut it in half and I set it in the hot cast iron skillet. I shut off the heat, it's already hot enough. Um, and there's also enough fat in there that you don't need to butter the roll before you put it in there. Just let it sit in there for a little bit. Let it get golden brown. That way when you're making your burger, it doesn't get all soggy in the bun. And that is going to do it for me for this episode. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch it. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you're seeing the new recipe every single week, plus other content I'm working on putting out. Follow me on any of my social medias, The Green Bay Guy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, The GB Guy on Snapchat. Until next time.
Go Pack Go!